everyone. Welcome to our new podcast called Mother Me, Keisha. Yes, Keisha from The Truth Show and Keisha's Gossips and Truths. And, and daughter, me, Alexis, from, um, who's coming in college right now. So. al Azair chat, which means... A.K.A. random chat. Yes, that's what it means. <laughs> Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Hello all, welcome back to Mother and Daughter Chat. I know we've been out for a while since like last year, August or something. I'm not even sure when. Sorry, if you have been reading my blog, you already know what we have been going through. So that shouldn't be a problem. Thank you for all your prayers. Thank you for all who supported us. Thank you for all who even took the time to read my blog and my daughter's blog. To find out what we've been going through. You know what I mean, Lexi? Yes. Um, we went through, I'm sure you have a mom's blog about some issues, especially the hilarious visit um, happened at the, the hospital. Nothing serious, but yeah. Anyway, um, I might um, write about it on my blog as well, but that's only if, wait, you guys do know how to blog, right? It's listed on my mom's website. Yeah, so check it out. Very deep. My daughter got some skills. I wonder who she should get her writing skills from. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other than that, she's been going to school. She changed her major three times, but this one seemed to be sticking. So cross your fingers, people. Hopefully she won't change it again. Huh, Alex? I'm not going to. Okay, good. Because no one got time for that. This is the last go round for you. Okay? No more changing it every 3.5 seconds. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Seriously embellishing, but seriously, this is our third time changing her major. But, you know, sometimes it takes a while for someone to, you know, find themselves and figure out what they want to do with their lives, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so anyway, let's get on to talking about the podcast that we're coming in for today. Of course, yes, we're going to start with the usual, well, it's not the usual show's layout, but if you've been doing our live feed or looking at our live feed you see we kind of split it up in segments the first segment will be about lifestyle talk the second segment will be about politics and world news and the third segment is about celeb gossip and the fourth segment is about brain food so i hope you guys are ready if you're in your car relax listen if you're on your break or lunch relax and listen or if you're simply just sitting around the house doing housework or whatever still sitting relax listen have some wine, coffee, or whatever it is you drink, and just enjoy this podcast because we are some deep people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, we yeah. are. <laughs> so let's get started. I'm a sociopath. While both sociopathy and narcissism and personality disorders, they are not the same. Sociopaths are more calculating and have no regard for the welfare or pain of others. And they are most likely to derive pleasure from their acts. Narcissists differ because their actions are usually targeted towards self-inflation. And any harm done to others is typically a result of them pursuing to the goal. So they will pretty much step on anyone they want to in order to get to their goal. There are a lot of celebrities like that, trust me. Well, sociopaths can be identified by their frequent run-ins with the law. We were talking about how to identify sociopaths, so keep up with me here. So, sociopaths can be identified by their frequent run-ins with the law. They also have very few hang-ups with exploiting people purely for their gain and have been known to have dramatic or volatile interactions with dealing with people. Now... And sociopaths are more likely to have difficulty holding a job, too, and may be unable to form stable relationships. Just saying. Because you got to understand. Even though they have some characteristics, like a narcissistic person, but sociopaths have no feelings. They have no morals. You know what I mean? Yeah. They really only care about themselves. And they don't mind going into deep, dark ways to get them, too. I mean, they really just don't care. 
you know, but let's get back to narcissistic behavior. How to identify a narcissist? Someone with a narcissistic personality disorder will display an excessively heightened sense of importance. They show me to be admired or an entitlement to special treatment. Other times, a person with this disorder may have dreams of wielding a far reaching power like I want power. Yes. Ugh. Sorry, I had a moment. <laughs> I'm not narcissistic people, trust me. <laughs> narcissistic because I like, I'm an introvert and I kind of like my privacy. If you're going to be a narcissistic person, you can't like your privacy. Narcissistic don't care if they must lie and scheme their way to a desired position. They are typically unconcerned about the needs of their partners in romantic relationships. all about me, 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 me. It may feel slight. Remind me of Kanye West. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, he has slight narcissistic behavior. I mean, okay, I'm going to check it out. Anyway, and may feel slighted when they don't receive praise or admiration for their achievements. Oh, could this be classified as Kim Kardashian as well? Ooh, could be. Could be. We're going to talk about her in a minute. Okay, now, they have to feel admired and they must be congratulated for their achievements. I don't like that. You know what I mean? I'd rather just, I'm like Bill Cosby. I don't want to get an award. Watch my show. I hope you get enlightened. I hope you're entertained. Congratulations. I'm glad you were entertained. But don't nominate me for any awards. I'm not going to a red carpet. I don't, I just don't. Leave it alone. You know, that's how I am. Do my charity work in private. Yeah. You know, they just see a name up there. I don't even know who the person is. You know, they'll be like, that name pops up a lot for charity. Who is this person? They won't even know it's me. That's how I want to do my thing because my privacy is definitely something I value. So, anyway, getting back to how to identify narcissistic people. Away from the view of others. However, when a narcissist is looking within, they may experience heightened feelings of shame. Oh, yes. Think about this. Remember, I told you about morals, conscience, okay? Helplessness and anger when difficulties crop up that interfere with a project vision of themselves. So someone interfere with their project, they feel anger and helplessness. Like, okay, you distracted me from my goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. This disorder may lead pay attention. This this order may lead to an increased risk of attempting or carrying out suicide because you inflicted on your goal. Their goal was like, I want to be the greatest. I have to be the greatest. <laughs> you screwed up my vision. Now, the difference between narcissists and sociopaths, sociopaths just kill you. Yeah. A narcissist person more than likely inflict pain on themselves. That's the difference. Both, however, both include lack of empathy of others because it's about me, 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 me. Okay? Tell me what you think, Alexis, about these differences between narcissists and sociopaths. Okay. We know Kim Kardashian's definitely a narcissist and so is um, Kanye West. Well, I can to a certain degree. Well, I can understand how a lot of people might confuse the two. Be well, because well, because this thing is social paths. Um, they don't have a particular emotion when it comes to people in general. Mm -hmm. Social paths are the pe type of people that you would um, run across that will be more like they act out emotion mm -hmm. rather than feel emotion. That's mm -hmm. the difference, major difference between between a narcissist. The narcissist would still feel sad. Yeah. If it's some, something that they really cared about. And, um, but a sociopath is different. They don't really understand. It's like they don't understand or process emotions correctly. Like, a person mourning their father's death, a sociopath would be more of that person in the back just watching everyone get sad. That's or, true. even though you can tell they're not really crying because there's no tears forming. But they want to feel that Cause they, cause they know, empathy yeah, from others. Yeah, because yeah. they know that it's either yeah. they know they're supposed to be crying mm -hmm. or they want to. A narcissist will cry because they want attention. That would be the, that's, the difference is like the thought process behind it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Are you guys getting the differences between the two? I hope you got that. I hope you got that. To identify these people, remember, sociopaths more than likely will have running with the law. They probably committed some really violent things. They have violent and really dramatic interactions when they don't get their way and when they're dealing with people. And they probably will form to murder. And stuff. Those are sociopaths. They have no morals. They have no empathy. They have nothing. Uh, narcissist person will more than likely to get more empathy 
and sympathy from others, they will harm themselves. And they will want you to feel sorry for them. They always play a victim card. Always playing a victim card, a narcissistic person. That's why you can identify the two people. You know what I mean? So, what celebrities who I think, well, 80%, of, I think even to be in Hollywood, you have to be some kind of a narcissistic person. You have to be. You can't be someone who doesn't like attention. Oh, I know. Can you believe it? I mean, you, I mean, Jennifer Lopez is definitely the top of a narcissistic person. You know what I mean? Kim Kardashian is definitely narcissist. Um, Beyonce and Jay-Z are the king and queens of narcissist people. Uh, let's see here. Oh, gosh. Caucasians, we have Brad Pitt. He's definitely a narcissistic person. Then I feel like all the, all the celebrities are freaking narcissistic people. Yeah. I won't describe Oprah Murphy being a narcissistic person, though. She don't, type, she don't strike me as a type. She more, you know, not really. You think Oprah is? I don't think so. Hmm. She may, okay, she probably was not on the fence of a narcissistic person when it's convenient to be a narcissistic person. I don't know. I mean, she does have, look, I don't know, because you can't just say, like, someone having their own magazine named after them is particularly narcissistic. So, I was like, I don't know. That's a good question, though. She do have a magazine. Well, yeah, but well, she has a lot of tips on there, though. I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess having a magazine is like having your own online journal, right? We'll put her in pending. How about that? <laughs> You know, just say she's struggling to finish. She's narcissistic when it's convenient being narcissistic. Just say it like that. Convenient narcissist. I just invented that whole category. We are coming with a new adventure, people. Convenient narcissist. Is it? No. Narcissism. Okay, yeah. Convenient narcissism. Perfect. It's not even a freaking thing, but we just made it. We just made it. Okay, we just made that up, and that was seriously genius. I'm going to say myself. Let's get a hand clap here. Okay, so let's move on to the politics. Ooh, serious talk, people. Okay, as we know, there has been a spree of shooting, a total of, and this is so sad, and this is when I uh, type the script, it's probably happened more in my, our prayers goes out to all those families, friends, whoever, lost these individuals our prayers goes out to you pray for strength pray for peace pray for justice okay now there has been i looked this up there has been a spree of shooting a total of 52 in january 87 people died including the shooters and 205 wounded none occurred at schools universities or place of worship that was just in january okay in february 52 shootings, 54 dead, including shooters, and 106 were wounded and occurred at a school or a university. So in February, it was like, okay, we need to occur in some place that's more public knowledge. So they decided to go to a school or university. So that's what happened. And then we in March. March 39, mass shootings, 55 dead, including shooters, and 105 were wounded and occurred at a school or university. And so far for the month, yes, April, there was a shooting in Louisville. I'm sure you know that in Kentucky. Louisville, Louisville, whatever your language takes you, okay? Six dead and nine injured so far. I'm not sure what the numbers are now, but at the time of the the script, that was then. Now, here is my interpretation of these shootings, Lexi. Yeah. <clears throat> there has been some kind of alliance with Russia and China and a few other countries that I can't quite remember. I can't help thinking, it's my intuition thinking, that these shootings is set up to devalue and scare many people who think coming to America, or in London too, yeah, anyway, coming to America to be a good thing. So they get it together so the, the value of our money and our country can be, just in blatant terms, no more. So I think these shootings is set up by some other means. Yeah. Because it see, it's really weird at the time. We start having extensive, we did have mass shooters in the past, but they weren't as frequent. It seems like ever since um, Prince Harry came here, the shootings start increasing. And we had these dramatic natural disasters. If you study natural disasters are not natural anymore, they can be misinterpreted by machines. I talked about it on my video. Um, I will put it on my TikTok later. Uh, the Truth Show Supreme. The Truth Show TikTok is all 
excuse my link, but it's all messed up. So anyway, it's called HARP, H-A-A-R-P, H-A-A-R-P. That particular machine is set up all around the United States. And if it goes off, it can set up tsunamis, earthquakes, floods, uh, the list goes on, tornadoes, it can do that. And I feel that they're using that. I don't know. It's really weird. I just think since Prince Terry got here, the shootings and all these natural, well, quote unquote, natural disasters has increased. It's it's strange. I, I just got a gut feeling this is all manipulated. What do you think? Hmm. Hmm. Um. But you really think about it. The timing does add up because shortly after, um, Harry, and um, Meghan Markle. Yeah, Meghan Markle. Mm -hmm. When they both. Well, what, when they both made it known that they were here in America, um, that's when a lot of stuff did start to happen, a lot of natural disasters and mm -hmm. things of that sort. Especially in Los Angeles. It's almost as if they're trying to scare them away from staying in the United States. And then go back to London? You have to go back to London. That's what I'm um, And then the shootings that happen in the schools. It's really weird that it's happening in that age demographic. Mm -hmm. So it's almost as if they're trying to like scare them into, like, hey, America is not safe, but I'm not. But only, but not only that. Um, America is known as a place where. When I say that America is like the place for people in other countries to move to or go to, I mean. And become whatever you want to be. I mean, when I watch. And that's true. Well, when I watch like other forms of entertainment, I'm talking about um, like. K drama. I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Um, I don't know the formal names of these type of entertainment. Excuse me if I'm like if it might come off as rude, but there's like um. No disrespect, people. There's also like Chinese movies, um, movies that are um. Uh, what do you call that religion? But look, I watch all kinds of like different language kind of movies, so I'm not just stuck to just English. And um, they all talk about movies in America. Not even joking with you. All of them. They they talk about moving to America as if it's like with this level up, like this next level of living. So a lot of um, different, especially poor income countries, those areas, they speak about moving to America as a like a dream place, like the place to move to. I know, and that's what the other countries want to stop. They want to scare people and not coming here anymore. So that's why all of these mass shootings, like you come here, you're probably prone to get shot or whatever the case yeah. may be. And that's what other countries are trying to do. But I don't think it's working. I mean, we can get the shooting under control, okay? If the, if the government has to walk it down and just eliminate guns altogether. We need a stricter gun law. Well, we did have one with Obama before Trump went into office. I know. The way um, Obama set up was really good because you have to, I think you have to get the screening and you also had your license. Yeah, you have to get an extensive background check in order yeah. to um, get a gun, but, we you know, Trump went in there and was like, anything Obama did, I, mean, I don't care if it's good or not, cut it. And that's exactly what he did. And then the mass shootings kind of increased years after that that's pretty much what happened i it's think we need to oh i think we do too is just that biden he's talking about it but i don't see any action about it and again I'm, you know i may not have been watching the news he seemed very distracted with the whole trump situation and all um, his, his, his people out in ukraine you know yeah. helping them and whatnot and raising taxes and <laughs> get why into are all we the so focused on ukraine anyway because there's people are down there okay. it's through haiti you know Haiti people came across the river or lake or whatever that was, and, it, and, oh, that was and they so sent sad. them back into whatever. And oh then we God. find out some of the kids came up missing, and they started sending them into trafficking. Oh, but you know, we so just sad. talked about that another day. You know, not screw that. I want to talk about that right now. Okay, so Haiti gave America tens of billions of dollars years ago when Clinton was president for a natural disaster relief fund. They gave America that. So that's why uh, the Haiti people sent them here for refuge. But we have Kamala, or Camilla, what the heck her freaking name is. She sent them back. But the, the people from um, Afghanistan and a lot of foreign countries, let's give them haven. Let's help them, people from Ukraine. Let's give them haven. Let's help them. But they sent our people back. I'm sorry. Come election time, I'm going to remember that. I have not forgot that they sent our people back. Seeing kids crying going across the river? I and then some men there, then babies coming and missing, and it turns out a group of white men who's sending them away trying to submit these poor children into trafficking? 
and then they tried to hide that with the news, with Trump bullshit news. No. And yes, I had to find out on TikTok. I couldn't find out on Instagram because it's so freaking filtered. Yes, that's why they want to get rid of TikTok, if you must know. Yeah, Keisha is back. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, I read about that. It was so sad. It was, like, they had a, like, cause you can look at the video even today, where, like, tons, it was, like, kids, um, families, and, um, and if you read about it now, a lot of those families that split up, yes. um, some kids are missing. And they had to sleep on their bridge somewhere in Texas, I believe, for a number of years. I think most of them got died, they died off or whatever, but they had to sleep on their bridge for uh, with uh, tents and stuff like that because it was waiting for some um, non-profit place, yeah. Red Cross, whatever, to come get them. No one came to get them. And none of our celebrity people decided to even start up some fundraiser. They said nothing. They didn't it. do a goddamn thing. They they, some of them even donated money to Ukraine. I'm like, your money focus was is not even there. I think I commented on someone's video because she helped someone else out that was of another race no pun intended yes a lot of people need help however i never see her do anything for her own race and then that's why when i asked they let me up in the freaking comment section they lit a new a-hole for me what does that mean so what some people knew what i was saying and why i asked it some people were like what does that mean she helped who cares i like because i never see her help her own people she always i'm not saying no names she only helped people outside her race. And that's not fair. Are you afraid to help your own people? You know what I mean? Yeah. If you do it, you have to do it in private? What are you, is this some agreement with somebody? You know, it's weird. Yeah. So I think some of these celebrities, aside from her, because she does help her own people, I think some of these celebrities, they get their priorities straight. Just because you got your money and everything doesn't mean you got to forget how you got there, forget your own neighborhood. Maybe it's time to bring up your own people so they can get where you at, or unless you're afraid of a little competition. Some people are just egotistical, narcissistic jerks. You know what I mean? Yeah. But whatever. What do you think? I think the situation is just so. It's just depressing. It is very depressing. Very and depressing. And. I wish a lot of more celebrities wouldn't feel so scared to actually do something about it. I think, and I think they're afraid of their peers uh pulling out because if they help too much of their own people they're probably scared of people who gave them that life in the first place but it's so sad cause, like there's so many people and like the, like knowing what happened to all of them mm -hmm. none of them had a good ending um and they didn't deserve that but it's like racism is such a huge thing that i don't see going away anytime soon yeah sometimes you get racist people can be people of the same color I know, and that's and that's one thing a lot of people tend for, to forget. Like when we think of racism, we only think of like white against Caucasian. Well, yeah, Caucasian against black. We don't see or we don't think of racism as in black against black person sure. or black is a group of black people like this where um, they don't accept a bunch of black people because the stigma of the stigma exists pretty much everywhere. Which I mean. It's so sad, but they think like um, the same thing about the way we're just violent or we are very um, aggressive people, and they want they don't want anything to do with us and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just sad that stuff like this will more than likely happen in the future if they ever like if it's like a bunch of black refugees showing up on the shore um, wanting help, they're not going to get it more than likely. Yeah, they scare them. I mean. They think they see a bunch of Negroes, you know, showing up, oh my gosh, they're going to start robbing us, they're going to start killing us. I don't mean to be rude or anything, but what is the leading race of serial killers? You mean crime in general. Yeah. It's Caucasians. It's not us. Most of the people in jail are innocent. If they did go, they'd go in there for us to like sell weed or something like that, not from killing people. No. Again, as many of our Negro leaders in the past. Violence heaped upon us, not the other way around. I'm not saying there aren't any Negro violent people out there. Oh, you know, I'm a little witness to that. Okay, yeah. so I'm not saying there isn't. However, but we talk about percentile. Let's be realistic here, people. And it's not even about the race. It's about equality and fairness, and that's something that we definitely need to deal with, deal with especially when it comes to this mass shooting. You know, we mm -hmm. really need to get this under control, and Biden needs to get his party straight. I. You know, Biden is, we need someone up there who's not Biden, you know, someone who is fair, someone who has some kind of effect on both sides of the tracks in terms of races, 
not just one singular race. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people could be affected by all the races, or just majority, you know, Negro and Caucasian and Hispanic or whatever. But the point of the matter is someone who knows how it feels to struggle. And someone who just not trying to look out for their own. Because at the end of the day, Biden is only out to look for his own. You know what I mean? But talking about narcissistic, uh, narrow-minded, tunnel vision leaders, let's talk about Trump. Okay? As you know, Trump is being indicted. Yes, I'm not going to get into all the details of his... 34, I think it's 34 indictments. I'm not getting into that. I'm not doing it. The judge appointed Donald Trump, who has been pulled into legal battle between Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who indicted the Donald Trump and Representative Jim Jordan, the Ohio Republican who carries the House Judiciary Committee, Alvin Bragg sued Jim Jordan on Tuesday over subpoenas that Alvin Bragg claims are part of quote unquote transparent campaign to intimidate and attack. Oh yes. Him over the indictment of Trump, which includes thirty-four felony charges of falsifying business records. The account stems from alleged hushed money. I've been saying this for years. Anyway, payments made by Michael Cohen, no other less. Trump's former attorney, I remember him? During the ex-presidency 2016 presidential campaign, the payments are partly tied to an alleged affair with former adult film star Stormy Daniels. This girl name just keep popping up all over this little Trump takedown here. <laughs> she must have been fantastic. <laughs> I'm just saying. You all should remember that when suddenly Stormy and her lawyer, Michael Avantati, suddenly stopped pursuing Trump. Reports say it was because the lawyer was threatened with alleged extortion of up to $25 million from Nike. I didn't even know that. I thought it was Hansel when I first saw him. Of course, the receding hairline was unattractive, but you didn't get past that. You alone. I cannot get past that, but still. Okay. I'm going to You alone that. If he would have shaved his hair ball, he wasn't a bad-looking Caucasian. You alone with that. I'm saying there's some fine living Caucasian Hispanics out there. I don't care what race you are. I'm just saying. <laughs> he is just a no. Let me, get, let me stop. Whereas in March 2019, during that meeting, he threatened to release damaging information about Nike unless it's paid. This is what he said. He was going to release damaging information about Nike. This is back in 2019. This is what Trump little people digged up to get Michael to drop the charges. He said that unless they paid him between $15 million and $25 million, he was going to release this scandalous crap about Nike. Nike. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. When he approached Nike, Michael had been representing his then client, Gary Franklin, who ran a youth basketball league in Los Angeles. Court papers said Michael threatened to hold a press conference alleging Nike had made illicit payments to young basketball players in Los Angeles, revealing this would wipe billions from Nike stock value, he claimed. Okay, if the alleges were true, it would have. Okay. Nike immediately reported the matter to federal prosecutors, and Michael was arrested shortly after announcing he would hold a news conference about the scandal surrounding the company. Well, Prosecutor Jeffrey Berman said, and I quote, this was an old-fashioned shakedown. As the jury heard, Michael had been at least, look at the comparison here, he tried to have them pay between $15 million and $25 million, yeah. and it turns out he was at least $11 million in debt. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So Michael's lawyer said he suffered while being held in solitary confinement and under a 24-hour lockdown in the same Manhattan prison cell that housed Mexican drug lord Jocon El Chapo. May I mispronounce that? <laughs> I think it's I think it's Joaquin or something like that. Joaquin El Chapo. <laughs> You're saying El Chapo. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I cannot. <laughs> you silly. I'm sorry. I shouldn't, I shouldn't laugh about that dude. It's probably dangerous. Rewind. 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 Michael's lawyer said.
said he suffered while being held in solitary confinement and under a 24-hour lockdown in the same Manhattan prison cell that housed Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. Oh, yes. Meanwhile, Trump is still denying the affair and putting out guilty to all charges, which we are not surprised about. Yeah. Putting out guilty to all charges, which we are not surprised about. Yeah. Also, Trump have been legend behind Michael being sentenced to years in prison in order to pay eleven million dollars in restitution for embezzling funds. For him trying to embezzle this eleven million dollars from Nike, he's been sentenced to you know years in prison. Oh yes. Meanwhile, going back to the present, Jim Jordan has issued a series of subpoenas as part of his investigation into Alvin Bragg's probe of the case. Jim Jordan and other Republicans said Trump has been a fairly treated in the justice system because this is unfair. You guys are lying about these charges. He has not embezzled money. He has not stolen money. He, he earns everything. He works his ass off, people. This is what they're saying, not me. I'm just saying. Uh, if you consider working, um, taking money for a bunch of people, then sure, you have been working to scam people. <laughs> that's what they said. That's what, that's what Jim Gordon and the other Republicans are saying about Trump. No surprise there. Now, the subpoenas, one of which target former President Mark Pomerantz, who previously oversaw the investigation into Trump sparked a lawsuit from Alvin Bragg. The case is now being handled by a New York judge appointed by then President Trump. Mm -hmm. We will keep you posted. Okay. I mean, I think that Trump made a mistake. I mean, just think about this, Lexi. I think Trump made a mistake becoming president. That's one freaking of many gazillion mistakes he did, but what he should not have done is become president. Which put all his dirty deeds into the hands of the government. When you're a white collar criminal, wannabe mob boss like Trump, you want to always stay under the radar and not become freaking president because you're no longer under the radar. You're no longer uh, able to hide your crimes. If you become part of the government and part of the system, they don't want to dig through all of your crap because there are some haters in the freaking, you know. Republican and government world, and they just, if they don't like you, they're going to find a reason to get rid of you. Yeah, that's true. And he put his business out there. See, that's why it took him so long to, put, to release his tax records, because he knew what his tax records were going to release, everything else is going to start falling down like dominoes. I mean, that's what happened. Everything did eventually start falling down. Yeah, it Especially when he became president, a lot of people started looking into his shady past and started digging up. Um, a lot of stuff that he tried to keep buried, but this is the United States, and information can be easily found, so a lot of the stuff that he tried to keep hidden, it didn't actually remain hidden for that long. Exactly. Exactly. So, I think, well, I'm going to say this, I think Trump, do you think he'll go to jail? I don't think he's going to go to jail. I don't know. Like, he's not someone I can see ever getting caught. He's kind of like that um, person, that bully, that bullies you. And you get so frustrated because, like, the person um, literally bullied you in front of the teacher, but they seem to never be in attention. Like, it just, he reminds me of that. Like, that person who never gets in trouble and never gets in attention. As far as the trouble he ever gets, it's just more like a, you know, a teacher, like, lecturing or something like that. But it would never go further than that. I don't see him ever actually being convicted. He, I'm not saying he's smart enough to not go to jail. I'm saying that... He have enough connections to not end up there. That's true. That's true. And with that being said, he's kind of like, I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he manages to scheme money for somehow. I don't know who would invest in his businesses that always fail. I don't, I don't know, know who would do it either. Like, no, seriously. I'm not saying this to be shady. Like, seriously. His businesses always fail. Damn, I know. So I don't know how he still manages to get money. I don't know. keep giving him money. You know he managed to raise $25 million? How? Seriously, how? I have no idea. Praise him like God. They said he's new coming to Christ or something like that. Like, seriously. Who's giving his orange saying. Cheeto some money? Like, I don't understand that. Like, he's not even good with business at all, actually. Like, he always went bankrupt. Oh here and there. Seriously, who will look at his business history, business records, and then go, hmm, yeah, this is someone I want to invest in, right? Yep, mm -hmm. this is definitely the person I want to send over millions of dollars 
Yeah, this is definitely not going in his pockets. It's definitely going towards the business, for sure. Mm-hmm. So true. So true. <laughs> so true. Well, you know what? Um, I don't know. I don't, I still, even with all this crap, I think they just give him a huge fine. Maybe, maybe, um, compensate some things. They probably, I don't know, probably take his house or repost some stuff. He probably have a huge auction or whatever the case may be. Just like that prophecy of Nostradamus. I've talked about that, by the way. I tried to leave the link below. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen, but he's going to do anything he possibly can to refrain from going to jail. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he's in what, 70 something years old. I don't think he's going to jail. Hmm. I think he's just going to just. His value and his name is no longer going to be powerful anymore. But I do. He's not powerful anymore. Well, it's still powerful. He managed to raise $25 million. Yeah. yeah. They're only doing this distraction because they don't want us to find a list of Epstein, the list that got released. Oh, yeah, about that list. It was on the internet for like a hot second and then it disappeared. Yeah, because they, they think they slick. They think they slick. Okay, in our next talk, we're going to talk about something a little calmer, something a little less serious, because, you know, politics and stuff like that just get me. Whew. But it's good to talk about the first, because it, bo it boosts your adrenaline, you know what I mean? You get pissed and angry and sad all at the same time, and then that gives you just enough battery juice to talk about celeb costa. Let's get started, people. Starting off in celeb news, we are going to talk about royal news. My favorite royal news, right, Lexi? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I talk about royal news more than any subject ever. <laughs> I think I was the one of few of my race, just saying I was, to talk about royal family. Yeah, yeah I mean, I was. Yeah, A I lot mean. of Negroes was not talking about the royal family. They didn't care about it. It was like, who? I know Princess Diane and Prince Charles and Elizabeth. Though, and of course, uh, Randy Andy or whatever they used to call them. But that was pretty much it. They really didn't talk about anyone else. I went down to the nitty gritty and they talked about them. I don't know why. I think but I did my family tree. I got, you know, my own story. The point of the matter is, I'm talking about the Royal News. Okay. So, let's get started. Okay. In Royal News, it has been reported that Lilybeth and Archie are now officially Princess and Prince. The title of Megan is the same. I will question that, but I'm not going there right now, so I'm going to let that go. Also, in the news, King Charles' coronation and his side chick Camille's coronation is set to be in May. May something. Anyway. Everyone was wondering if Megan and Harry would go to court to the coronation. Well, it's been confirmed that Megan would not be going because conveniently it's Archie's B day, and I think that was done intentionally to ensure Megan and Harry were not together that day. I pray that nothing happens because this is pretty freaking fishy. I knew when that date was set, I knew that they set that date on purpose because Queen Elizabeth coronation a million years ago was in June. Don't people still have their coronations around the same time? Because they knew it was his birthday. I knew when that day was set and I ran on the hill and I was like, hold up, that must be Archie's birthday. And so that was yeah, Archie's birthday. She they knew that if they set that day, they were gonna be separated. They didn't want Megan to come. And you know, all of these years, who's now called Princess uh Kate or Catherine or whatever she called for herself, you know she has had a light, a little fire, a little crush on Prince Harry for years. It wasn't papers and everything. She always had a little soft spot for Prince Harry. Even though her friend was dating him back in the day before he started messing around with um, Megan. Yeah. yeah, her friend used to date Prince Harry. But she always had a little soft spot. Even back in the day, you see their little outings together. She always... <laughs> and they chatting and sharing jokes and stuff. And then stiff and whatever you want to call it, bougie freaking Prince William at the time was looking off, you know, with his hands folded in front of him. Well, do, you think, joking. Well, do you think that's the reason why, like, he has such beef with Harry? Because a lot of people that um, do win with actually like Harry more. Yeah, and then he probably wasn't feeling uh, Kate that way, and Harry did offer distractions for him, so he can go do what he got to do, and he had to worry about 
can't get all in his business. You can be there too. I still can't get over that the person who's like the queen, sorry, she's not technically the queen, but she might as well be, but it's just sad that she's a queen though. Camilla. I, just, I, mm. I know. I, I'm not watching that dark coronation. I'm just, I just can't out of respect. As, out of respect for the fact they butcher uh, Megan and the, how they did Princess Diana. How they did our people in general. How they do people in general, okay? They just some selfish people. I know they have these charities, but we're not going to get to the darkness of why they have these charities. We're going to leave that for another oh, freaking podcast. Yeah, charities are a good way to turn the dirty money into clean money. Yeah, so that's one thing. Only thing I'll leave that topic with is saying is look at look into the charities that you're donating to. Don't just take it as well. This celebrity is donating to these charities, so I think it's a legit charity. No, no, no. Look into the charities. Actually, look into them. There are some charities that are similarly named to actual legit charities. Oh, heck yeah. They, a lot of people might confuse the like, fake charity with the real one and they donate money to the fake charity. Um, some of them are like hair flax or stuff like that. They don't actually give that hair to people who need it. So I'm just saying, they're not legit. So just look into a lot of them. Making sure you actually donate your money to a real cause. Oh yeah, make sure you're definitely, you know, using your money at a good cause. Because you gotta understand that family just didn't get rich off of slavery alone. People think, oh, we just slave right here. That's not the only way they got rich. I mean, if you watch my videos and TikTok videos, you would have all the tea. Apparently, Queen Victoria was the biggest drug trafficker in history. Wow. Yes, she was. She okay. <sighs> I'm not sure if they have this right now, but she trafficked cocaine. Mm -hmm. um, she was a huge fan of cocaine chewing gum, which I hear they still have. Isn't that bad for your mouth? Well, I mean, she had the baddest looking. Her and I think um, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's mother, Queen Elizabeth's mother, they had the worst teeth ever. You see her pictures, just make you want to vomit. They had terrible breath. Known for terrible breath. Ew. Okay, so yes. Queen Victoria was the biggest trafficker in history. They they traffic drugs, cocaine, people, children, and it's rumored, and this is all alleged, alleged information. That's why they have these charities, because when it comes to, you know, auditory, I know they're not paying taxes, they're collecting taxes, but somebody got to check the books. They better be legit. I mean, you got to understand, the king may be the king, but everything is pretty much up to the prime minister. They don't want to make the proof, just like we have the Congress and, you know, Senate and stuff like that. That's how that whole thing works. Is that the reason why they're... What? Sorry, I just can't get over the teeth thing. I told you they had terrible oh breath. Oh yes, before Elizabeth, Ooh. Queen. Okay, Queen Elizabeth II had terrible teeth too, but she got her teeth pulled out and she started wearing dentures. But before this, she had really bad teeth too. They just started taking care of your teeth until I don't know, many years later. You should see um, King Charles' teeth. His teeth is pretty bad too. You know, and Camilla teeth, I think she wears dentures too, but her teeth is pretty bad too. If you want to know how her teeth is, the top row of the teeth is normally fake. The bottom row is where you can see how bad it is. You know what I mean? Because they generally can't replace that down there unless you just get a full bone. But anyway, the, the point top and bottom are both hideous. The fake teeth look bad, the real teeth look bad. You looked it up on the They just look bad. You <laughs> looked it up on the internet, y'all. Like, so I told awful. you. <laughs> Like, like just start over, like just just pluck all of them out. Just start over. I well, I mean, well, it's too late now. Anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now, I mean, it's imperative for them to have you know, Colgate white smiles. I mean, you see the kid all over, all the time grinning like an idiot. I mean, every time you see her, she <laughs> she put on that smile. <laughs> I mean, you think they're doing freaking toothpaste? commercials. Look, if I paid to have my teeth look that clean, I would be smiling from here to the kingdom come. It's not their real teeth. They have that name of teeth over your teeth. I'm just saying to make it look I'm just saying if I bought like some really good teeth and I was really proud of my purchase, I would be smiling that much too. I have to admit uh, true. That's true. I mean especially if you in the past really had bad teeth. Mm -hmm. The girl always has some really good teeth though. I have to give it to her. But still it just the point of the matter is that family is dirty and they have these charities for a reason. They don't care, okay? They don't. They do it for publicity. Yeah. And they do it to hide the dirty stuff, 
Okay, it's just they just don't care. At the end of the day, it's about mula, money, all of this. They don't care about the public. They don't care about anything but themselves, their image, and making sure they keep getting money. And that's just the truth. I'm just saying. Yeah, you said it. And that's pretty much what it's going to be, and it's never going to change. Okay. And with that said, um, we are going to talk about some random stuff, and then we're going to pretty much sign off here. Okay. Touching base on Jennifer Lopez. You brought her up in a narcissistic conversation. What should we say about her, Lexi? Well, first of all, I'm going to actually talk about how the fact that she had she got in Mary a lot. She's the only person. <laughs> or I lost track. Hold on, okay. Let me see if I let me go from okay. Okay. No, I can't count anymore. I'm sorry. I used to. I know it was the first guy she got married to back when she was playing Selena. His name escapes me. Anyway, him. Uh, who was that after him? I look. She. Oh, uh, the dancer. No. Yeah, the dancer. Because dancer. Well, how, how, how about that? How about this? The dancer. The dancer. Uh, Jude or Chris Judd. Okay, Chris Judd, and then Mark Anthony. And uh, she dated Casper. Oh my gosh, they actually have like a um, website where you can actually see all the men she ever dated. I mean, married. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. Oh, they have pictures. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I told you, I think I know them all. It's, it's, it's the guy the, from when she was dating when she was playing the movie Selena. She got married to him. She got bored with him. Chris Judd and is Mark Anthony were after him. Okay. Then after him, Ben Affleck. She got married four times, right? She got married a lot. Like, she dated quite a few in between. Seven husbands, boyfriends, and fiancés. What? It was seven? That's what the internet say. Yeah, seven, um, seven husbands. They include boyfriends and fiancés. Oh, okay. Include boyfriends and fiancés. Yeah. Well, let me look at it. So here's the entire list, ready? Okay. So, oh, Ben Affleck was husband number four at one point. Uh, okay, I know, I know, I know. Chris Joe was number one. And then it was Mark Anthony was number two. Mark Anthony was number three. Chris Joe, number two. Number one was this, oh, No, Jan. no, no, I get that guy. Oh, God, I had it right the first time. I can't remember his name. Oh, yeah, no, no, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not even going to try. Okay, well, that, that dude. That she was dating. Just to sum it up, Jennifer Lopez have had a lot of lovers, and they all are convenient, except for a dancer. I think secretly and intimately and soulfully, she yeah. likes someone who like her who like to dance. Because I think her true desire is to dance. She started off dancing, mm -hmm. so I think between her um, career height boyfriend slash husbands, I think she. Goes back to her roots and get a dancer, and then when she do get her back broken and get you know her uh, her little jump start off, and then she dump that person, that guy, and then she gets with someone who can elevate her career. And now it's Ben Affleck because she won an Oscar. And she's like, I want an Oscar now, so Ben Affleck says, you know, he's the man in Hollywood now. That's what seems because it's the thing is when you really look back into her actual. Like career, and then you look into the people that she was with at the time. It really does seem like she got with those people only because those people could do something for her. I'm not saying that she's an opportunist, but I am saying that she's an opportunist. <laughs> well, she is an opportunist. I mean, the sugar code. I mean, first of all, we gotta admire her hustle. I mean, admire her hustle. If you it's not a bad thing. However, I don't like how she go back. I mean, you wanna. Be like kind of like Meghan Markle. You don't want to just she she's an opportunist, but she leaving a fleet of heartbreaks. You want to create more allies, not a, have a bunch of heartbreaks in your path because karma is a bitch. Yeah. When I mean, you go start paying for that crap, eventually, I mean, yeah, you want to leave allies, not heartbreaks and grud and grudges. You know, from people who you just stepped over and said deuces. You know what I mean? You don't want to yeah. do that. So think like Meghan Markle and Camilla, huh? Yeah. Okay, I shouldn't put Camilla and Meghan Markle in the same category. But I'm just saying, create more allies. Think of that hustle. Get with the people who can achieve your dream, who will help you achieve your dream. You hear the celebrities say that all the time. Surround yourself with people who share the same dream as you do. 
That's what you want to do. And that's what Jennifer Lopez do. Even though she comes across, well, no, even though she's a narcissistic person, I don't think she care about anyone but herself and a small circle of people, but I'm still a huge fan of hers. The girl got a style like you wouldn't believe. Jennifer Lopez can dress. Her hair be on point. Her makeup be on point. She is just the baddest artistic flavor woman out there. You got to give her props, okay? Yeah. The girl is bad. She is. She is bad. I mean, I want her to hang her, but the girl is bad. She I mean, she can not sing, but, you know. Yeah, she can. But, however, however, she can dance. I'll give her that. And she can act. She's a very she good actress. Really good. She's a very good actress. Kim Kardashian. I know what you guys were going to say. Kim Kardashian can act. Why are you quiet? No, I'm thinking. Like, I think it was the last time she acted in something. Well, she acted in um, the skits with uh, Saturday Night Live, and she did a movie with uh, Tyler Perry, that movie um, with that girl from um, Bay Bayou. That girl from Bayou. She she did a movie with her. Yeah. No, that's not right. No, no, no. no I, no, that is right. Look, I will get. I will hand it to her. I do think she is a really good actress. I do. I think the only reason why a lot of people are narcissists are very good actors and actresses. <laughs> but I think I think the reason why a lot of people don't really hand that to her is probably because they're not used to seeing her as an actress. Like it's just kind of weird. She kind of like a uh, Beyonce or a, like someone who is just. You just see them as one thing for like just a little bit too much, so you don't actually see their face as anything else other than just themselves. That's true. That is definitely true. Well, all I can say is that she is a good actress. I think she is... She should never marry anybody ever. Marriage should not even be in her category because she doesn't know what marriage... She don't know how to be a wife. You know, as soon as things get really, really rough, she drop them. That's not how marriage works. Some of the people who's been married for 20 some years, they can tell you some horror stories they've been through with their husbands. You know what I mean? But they still stuck it out. Kim Kardashian's like, it's too much, it's too much. My brain is getting too much, it's too much. I want a divorce. Four kids, my And you want a divorce? I don't know. Four I, kids. I admire the fact that, like, Legal kids. Legal separating. Just I don't know. I admire the fact that, like, kids aren't enough to keep her in a bad relationship. I no, do she, admire that. She just, well, I admire her backbone, yes. I do admire her backbone. But I'm starting to wonder, does she have four kids by him to choose and love him? Or does she have four kids by him to have guaranteed income? Well, that's a good question. I mean, look at Jennifer Lopez. She got two money makers now. She did. I mean, them kids are very talented. And don't get me started on Mariah Carey. But then again, Mariah Carey, Jesus probably made her money because her daughter can sing her ass off, okay? But then again, Mariah Carey doesn't even need anybody else. I know. Her money is still good. I mean, her recorded songs live is great. Anyway, so, Kanye West. Do you think he'll make a comeback? I don't know. He seems so bad on just staying anonymous. No. I, I think that Kanye West... See, Kanye West made that anti-Semitic, whatever you call it, freaking um comment. And the comment... I'm not even getting into that right now. If you look at my own TikTok, you know exactly how I feel about that. But he started allegedly marrying this Caucasian woman to ease up the flack and the lash backlash he was getting from the Caucasian and the Jewish community. That's why, you know what I mean? She, he didn't do it because he wanted to. He did it for a publicity stunt. You know what I mean? Yeah. And once that died down, he was like, oh, uh, Jonah Hill, I watched that movie. I don't feel the same way about Jewish. Although it's no proof that he even said that, but we can just lead the grapevine through TMZ. I don't know. But anyway, so I think all this stuff that Kanye's doing is for, this, for publicity. I know there's been some rumors about his schooling, but we always hear rumors about his schooling and stuff like that. I don't know. But I do feel... That he's gonna come back. I think they're just saying that only because they can't like believe someone who is actually very intelligent and very smart will say stuff like that. They were saying they only get fed sushi or some crap like that. He only feed the kids sushi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the fuck ever. I I'm just gonna be realistic here. I don't believe those rumors at all. But I am gonna say this: Kanye, the only man, can allegedly socially and media propaganda say that he's broke which he is not by the way to actually if he wants to become a billionaire shoot in months if you want to 
if he wants to. Because no one else is gonna make him money, make them money like that. Beyonce tried, she's 200 million in the home. P. Diddy, who in the hell cares? And we have Jay Z, he's the new mascot now for all the Caucasian billionaires. You know, look what he done to the NFL. He never lost many viewers to him. It's ridiculous. And now he's trying to hook up with some bigger companies. He's the new mascot. They don't have Kanye West anymore. So they have yeah. they have Jay Z and Shark Holmes. Those are the two mascots right there. Making the white man who sits in the back in the bunch in their little thrones and stuff. Why you let these girls making the money? They have Jay Z and P. Diddy right now to do that. So have fun. There you go. There's your show. Make them money and why they collect the most money. Why you in the front line like some smiling green idiot. Work it, you know, I'm done because that's what they are. And he sits there with his Louis Vuitton shoes, thinking, You're not the man, you are working for the man. Signing off, it was a pleasure speaking with you guys. Please stay here for Thursday podcast because we got some more stuff to talk about. If you want to be featured in our podcast, just leave the message below or email us or whatever the case may be. All the information is below, and you can um, see. Well, if you want to read my blog, my blog will be on my mom's uh, website, and you can just see whatever like thought I have. Just I don't know. I decided to post in there, and that's the both of us. And stay tuned for the next podcast. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, that's it for today's podcast. Tune in for Tuesday's podcast. Oh yes, we're here every Tuesday oh. and Thursday, y'all, yeah, and we have a lot more coming. No filter, especially you, mom. Anyway, talk to you all later. Well, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>